this is a big backpack and that's exactly why I bought it and integrated it into my own systems because oftentimes I need a big backpack I'm carrying lots of things that gives me lots of capabilities now maybe you've done a multi-day even week-long backpacking trip hunting expedition big game variety maybe you're a military member army marines deploying to Afghanistan carrying all types of combat gear comms body armor weapons extra ammunition food first aid multi-tools the list goes on and on if that's the case you fall into any of those categories and probably a lot more where you need a large volume durable tough backpack you might find this video helpful you're watching the Nothing Fancy Project we are well into year five and I've had this particular pack for over three years now in testing we have two of them and they have been hard used here in TMP you might reference a couple videos that came out showing the pack in use in a bunch of different environments one would be the winter sense snowshoeing expedition multi-day adventure another one the sub-zero adventure with my friend Crockett 20 that was fun cold too <laughs> and then we did the tactical 308 battle rifle review where the Kelty Eagle came along and that was Operation Red Skies a multi-parter here in TMP now if you're in a hurry you're going to come back to the video, watch it, all the details, and the rolling footage of all this testing I've done on this pack. Um, here's your, I guess, 20 to 30 second review. <laughs> I've been doing this lately. It's hilarious. Buy the pack. You'll be hard pressed to match its value if you need a large volume pack. And in philosophy of use, we'll talk about that briefly. But assuming you do, you're going to be very hard pressed to meet its value level its durability, its features, the coloration, which I think is excellent, in the Kelty Eagle 128. There's your review. It pretty much rocks. There's not much negative I can say about it other than weight, but pretty much when you're carrying nearly 8,000 cubic inches of volume, you're going to have a heavy backpack, at least one that's going to be able to withstand a tactical environment, a war environment, and that's what Kelty designed this pack for. Incidentally, and if you go back to my 2010 videos showing this pack in use, it was called the Kelty Eagle 7850. And the name is actually right here. So this is an older version. I guess it's vogue now to go by liters for volume measurement. So it's the Kelty Eagle 128. There is a smaller version called the Falcon. I have not tested that. I love Kelty. We go back a long ways, Kelty and I, way back into the 70s and 80s when I was using their products I have a lot of experience with them and I have a lot of love for the brand because they deliver a lot for the money Kelty is not about hype they're not about super, superfluous crap they're about giving you a lot for your money and backing it up with a lifetime warranty I recommend this pack first before we get into the details I'm going to show you as quickly as I can what I know about this pack I might miss some stuff get some stuff wrong but from a user's perspective I think you'll come away from this video knowing if it's right for your system or not. Before we get into the details, I want to talk about the realities of the firepower versus mobility equation that I've talked about here in TMP. I set forth way back in 2008. And the reason I do that is for just such a review like this. You're looking at firepower here, dudes. We're carrying a lot of capabilities when we have a nearly 8,000 cubic inch pack, right? What kind of capabilities? Well, I mentioned some at the outset. In a combat environment, at least, we have an ability to carry extra ammunition, maybe a good comms unit, first aid, extra food, sleeping equipment that makes our life a little bit better, more comfortable. You need volume for that, especially when the weather dictates you need cold weather stuff. You would see that, for instance, again, in the Sub-Zero series of videos, winter scent series of videos because you need extra gloves, extra socks, thermals, maybe an extra parka, a shell system, all that takes room. I think a lot of people who have not got out and done a multi-day expedition are kidding themselves that they can do it with the so-called, and I've said this on camera before, 
three-day expedition pack and there's a lot of tactical manufacturers that run these things and to me they're little day packs they just are I'm not saying you can't make your system fit into there but you're going to give up a lot of capabilities there's no way around it I know I've been out with a lot of guys I've seen them be very unprepared and yet they're bragging about how they're so high speed they have a very small and lightweight backpack we get up to where we're going I was like well you have this you have that no 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 <laughs> hey nothing fancy can I borrow your multi-tool hey nothing fancy do you have a I don't know fire starting kit whatever they left it's always gonna be something you can make it fit but you're gonna give it up that's the first thing you need to consider do you need that much firepower what is your system because we're talking about a large pack here. Ideally suited to people six feet or over the Kelta Eagle 128. And incidentally, it's not really put together all the way. This is actually the more streamlined version as you saw me run it in Operation Red Skies. It actually has a detachable fanny pack and hood that goes on the top. It actually looked like this. When we're talking about the full 8,000 cubic inch, it's like that, plus another side pocket that would be right here. You need something that big. Can you carry it? <laughs> this is very important. Okay, it's great to have your gun, it's great to have your systems, your body armor, extra ammunition, all your preparedness items. But if your body is not in shape enough to carry it, you're going to be in a static situation. I cannot overemphasize that. Your body is your number one preparedness item and it needs to be taken care of because you cannot count on transportation gasoline being delivered, your vehicles working, roads being open. You can count on your two feet and that will relegate you to a system like that. Can you carry it? Well, how much weight are you talking about, nothing? Well, that's a good question. I would say about 80 pounds. When I ran those outings and some I didn't show on camera, I'm running about 80 pounds in this sucker, which for me is my limit. And as I get older, it may be reduced. If I get an injury, it may be reduced. But are you healthy enough to run a backpack this big? That's a very important point. Now, I know of one person, a dude who's a buck 50. That is 150 pounds. He's 5'10", and he was running an Eagle, and he loved it, so it fit him. So I think it's ideally suited for over six feet, but you can make it work. So that's the foundation of philosophy of use when we talk about the Kelty Eagle. Please consider that. When we talk about POU, I'm going to th first throw out bug out kit. And that's always what I've called them. There's a bunch of different names for them. Just a preparedness kit, a grab and go kit that has everything you need in it uh, to live for a certain period of time. Is this a good container for that? I would say yes, it is a good container. I would not say it's the ideal container. Stay sub to the Nut and Fancy Project and you'll see other videos where I explain exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not doing it here. <coughs> but if you're in shape, you don't have injuries, you can carry it. Can you cram enough into this sucker to live a week? Um, to be honest with you, it's going to be tight. If you're talking food, shelter, clothing for a week, it's going to be tight. Don't kid yourself. I've been backpacking ever since I was, I don't know, seven. Been up there a lot. Don't kid yourself. A week is a long time. and Unless you're going to just really accept the hardship of whatever variety you want to say, that will reduce your volume. If you're willing to not live as comfortable as you're used to, you can always reduce your volume. Just carry food. You, know, you don't have first aid capabilities or extensive level 2 type first aid carry, uh, capabilities. Maybe level 1 plus. Referencing another TMP concept. I don't know. I would say you could probably make it fit for one person. It's going to be heavy unless you go freeze dried food. But yeah, it'd work. Uh, I talked at the outset as a combat back backpack, a tactical pack. And these guys need the volume. They just do. Like I said, com combat gear, all types of stuff they need. And lo and behold, they're going to have a pack this big. And it's going to be heavy, but that's what they need. If they're on a long-range patrol of whatever variety, I think the Kelt Eagle will do excellent in that situation. In fact, I read a couple reviews on it where it did just that. And the military dudes are saying, yeah, it's great. I have heard complaints that if you go above like 90 pounds, maybe 80 pounds, the suspension system really isn't suited for that. And I think that might be a valid criticism on the Kelt Eagle 128. 
combat pack, tactical pack for whatever variety. And that really was another reason I did Operation Red Skies, not just for the 308 battle rifles, but I usually test a lot of different things concurrently with a multi-day outing like that to use my time as efficiently as I can. And I think in that series of videos I talked about the applicability and usefulness of the Kelty Eagle. It was ideal. PFI dude wants one bad. I don't know if he got one, but he's he's like, yeah, dude, that pack rocks. And it does. You need a lot of volume. How about a travel pack? If you're just going overseas, backpacking through Europe, absolutely. Is, you know, flat desert earth, coyote brown your best color for that? Maybe not. Some people's minds, you know, it denotes a, a military system. And you may or may not want to send that message to wherever you're going. And then uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I could say here. I'm just going to press on. Winter camping pack. Like I said, winter camping is its own animal. If you haven't done it, try it and then talk to me. I'm talking about a backpack, not rolling up on a snowmobile, a four wheel or your backpack or your truck, rolling outside the cabin and calling that a winter expedition. I'm talking about a man portable system. You hike it in. Especially when the snow's deep. Talk to me after that. You do it in like four foot of snow on snowshoes, you tell me how much work that is. It is a butt kicker. Ask Crockett. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, and you need a lot of systems. You need a lot of calories in that situation. That means a lot of food. Where are you going to haul the food? You ain't going to do it in no 2,000 cubic inch pack. I ain't seen it done. Not multi-day, maybe an afternoon outing you might. I don't know. That's just me. Size and weight. It's big, like I said. Fully up, I think it's like 44 inches long, 29 inches wide. That's Kelty's measurements. I didn't measure it. Full-on 7850 cubic inches. That's with the side pockets attached. That's with the cummerbund on the top, the top thingamabob right here attached as well. The nice thing is you can vary that volume, even though it is 7850 cubic inches, 128 liters, same thing. You may not need that, and in Operation Red Skies, I did not need that, and I didn't want to carry around extra weight. I wanted to have a more streamlined tactical backpack and that's why I peeled one pocket off, left this pocket on, left this at home. And that's how I ran it. And that will bring your volume, I believe, down about 6,200 cubic inches. That might be without the side pocket. So. so for most systems, that might be plenty. Plenty. The weight is substantial. I think it's like 11 pounds, 4 ounces or something on the Kelty 128. I haven't seen a durable tactical backpack that really comes in at a lightweight. We had a great visit with Glenn Eberly. He makes awesome products. I'll reference his products before the video ends. They're excellent. They are also heavy though. Well, relatively speaking. I think as the years go on and newer and smarter materials, materials applications are applied to this, you're going to see the weight come down. You might see a pack this size with this level of durability down the road weighing about seven pounds. That's my prediction. We sure ain't there yet. So if you want to play the game, that is carrying a bunch of gear, being able to throw it in and out of armored vehicles, having to go into rocky terrain, come out without getting shredded, you're going to have to take some weight. It's just the way it is. It's where the technology is right now. And that will take us to suspension on the Kelty Eagle 128. It is adjustable. You can move, I believe, this pad up and down to vary it according to your height, which it talks about in what I will say is a pretty sucky manual. <laughs> this manual sucks. Hey, Kelty. Give the guys a real manual. Come on. It should explain every feature. It should make the guy feel awesome and smart for buying your product. It's just very basic. There is, however, a discussion on how to adjust the back panel for your height. It does ventilate, first and foremost, very well. And I found that to be the case in Operation Red Skies, where it was running upwards of 95 degrees in the day. Generating a lot of sweat. And you have a mesh backpack ba back pad here. To help get some air going behind there and I never really felt like uh, I was suffocating on the back panel. Mesh on the backpack straps. I generally, I'm going to kind of jump ahead here to padding, I generally like less padding on my backpack straps. Of whatever variety, whether you're talking a multi-day expedition pack like this one or a day pack, I just find that the extra padding is going to compress no matter what. You might as well just start out with a flat and broad pad with a very dense and thinner foam. That's just me. 
That being said, the Eagles straps were comfortable. They would pick up seeds though because they do have an open athletic style of mesh that you can see right there. I've talked about that in some other reviews. Is that a showstopper or nothing? No, it's not. It works fine. I mean, it'll breathe. Here's your sternum strap right here. It is adjustable. There we go. Mandatory, the sternum strap. And there's your load lifter straps right here. That will pull this top backpack, uh, I should say top of the pack bag towards your head for more stability. I usually crank these suckers down as much as they can. That's why you see these shoulder straps compressed a little bit because I'm really trying to make that backpack conform to, to me so we are one unit. So I don't have a backpack, I mean it's 80 pounds that I'm running back there. So I don't want to be falling over. You can do that with Eagle. One thing you might find, depending on the style of hat that you have, is you don't really have a hat pocket here. Even if you did, it would compress with the stuff you've loaded in it. You might be bumping your hat in the back. I just was running a ball cap, just a TNP cap, kind of like that. And that works fine, but if you wear like a boonie cap, it may not work. The suspension itself is actually a poly frame sheet on the back of the Eagle 128 with aluminum states. And in my testing, that was enough. And I carried what I feel is a pretty decent load around again over the years, probably 60 to 80 pounds. I never went over 80 if I remember correctly. But for that, you should find it to be adequate. If you want to carry more weight and like a lot of ammunition, maybe a lot more metal, whether it's knives, guns, tools, axes, whatever, you might want to go to a frame pack. Good luck finding one as big as this because for whatever reason the market just does not support a large frame pack. Kelty made one, I have it, I've shown it on camera, it's a Super Tioga and it is an outstanding frame pack. It's red, it's not a tactical frame pack, but it's that awesome. But my point is, a frame pack is when you carry a ton of weight, go with a frame. Just look at what the Sherpas do. In Nepal, what are they using? Well, generally speaking, they'll use a frame pack of some sort, maybe it's homemade, but it works talking about suspension system. The cool thing is on the back, and I use these a lot, these are lifter straps, so when your pack is 80 pounds, you're throwing it in the back of whatever, your Hummer, your MRAP, your pickup truck, great way to carry it. Here's your waist belt. Again, the padding is a little bit fat on it, but it works. Ventilated the same exact way, you got a butt pad right here. There's a seed right there. See how that worked in there? Like a weed seed. See, that sucker's in there. I gotta like pull it out with a pair of pliers. Your uh, waist strap is quick adjust. Never popped off, never broke on me. Even in sub-zero temperatures. Can I promise it won't do it to you? Absolutely not. I don't have a crystal ball. Things fail, that's just the way it is. Got some molly strapping here. I didn't really use this. You could though. It'd be a great place in a combat environment to put your sniper's pistol, kinda like the Walther PPQ. Strap that sucker on there. Uh, you'd have to make sure the interferences though. I talk about interferences in your tactical stuff all the time. And the only way you're going to know is by strapping everything on and seeing what bumps into what. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you have a tactical carbine swinging and banging in here. You can't access your weapons quick enough because you didn't plan it out enough. Always put your stuff on as you're going to hike it and uh, see if it works. Speaking of which, the Kelty Eagle 128 did interface nicely with the tactical assault gear LBE I was wearing. I think I was running the Phalanx rig. So it's a backless rig, any type of rig like that where you have a smooth back and no, not a lot of fast text buckles and stuff, you'll interface nice. That way you'll have your ammo right on the front, quick accessible. That's one of the things that we test in op red skies. I <laughs> can see my white legs there, that's hilarious. Suspension's good. You got some stabilizer straps here on the side. They didn't bust. All the webbing material in Kelty products is top notch. It's good stuff, and I'm picky about that. I will kid you not. If I see a backpack and I can immediately detect when they're using substandard materials, whether it's nylons, uh, you know, webbing, I'm not interested. I'll walk away. I was just like, no, -uh, no way. That's a price point nylon item whether it's tactical backpack and outdoor and I think it sucks a couple D rings here if you want to attach compass I didn't use those at all I do use these though because I will interface like a GPS pouch on here like you saw on op red skies and the other outings and I was running GPS 60 CX by Garmin 
or maybe a cell phone pouch. So this is very useful to have. Now, with the Kelty Eagle, I want to mention this. You do have these side stays. They're springs, actually, that are covered with lycra. Kind of cheesy because I think over time this lycra will break on you, especially if you're out in rocks, a rocky environment like Afghanistan or whatnot. And it's not super clear from their horrible manual what to do with these, but I'm showing you how they go. They actually jam into the side pocket here of your waist belt and what that does is give you more rigidity and I guess weight transfer in this portion, I guess. Uh, to get them out of the way, I just jammed them in. Uh, I don't know if the pack would be unserviceable without them. I don't think they do that much, to be honest with you. And they are kind of like I say, a metal spring material coming here. Uh, that's what I know about it. And we just ran it like that and just called it good. Didn't worry about it. On the bottom here, it's kind of going into special features. You have an integrated rain cover on the Kelt Eagle 128. Pretty sick. I didn't have, actually I take that back, we did use this. I think it's Sub-Zero I was using it. And you can take it off if you want to save some weight. I think it would be a pain in the butt because this elastic is woven into that Fast Tech, attach, uh, Fast Tech's attachment. Kind of specifically, you could pull it off though. I just ran it and I probably am carrying around another 11 ounces that I could shed if weight was super critical, which it is. But so is time and that takes me time to take it off find a place and then I'll probably lose it. I recommend just running it. And I think that's high value that they include this rain cover and check the color. It's the same as the pack. Because what we're talking about, a high value Kelty product. I like that. Molly on the bottom, I used it. At times I would strap, I don't know, a tent on the bottom. Although even with an internal frame, I like keeping my weight close to my back between my shoulder blades, sometimes even going high just like I would an external frame. So I don't like put a lot of weight down low. So I'd keep something light strapped here. And then I would strap it here on these runners, these tie downs right here. So I could run a sleeping pad vertically down here. And as you saw, I think it was in uh, winter since, I use this a lot too. These are like catch-all stays here or straps I should say. So I'll run a pad here, maybe whatever, Allie's bed, my Black Lab's bed. When she, I don't like her freezing any more than I want to be froze. So I'll carry her bed up sometimes. This is what I'm talking. <laughs> Capabilities, a lot of volume needed. And these are awesome. I wish they were a little bit longer so we'd have more capabilities to strap because I was running these all the way to their ends, trying to fit everything in there and then cranking it down. But I, I love that they're there. It's just a great system. For an internal frame, this has a lot of lashing capabilities. A lot. And it's hard to find that in a lot of internal frames. They almost go for style more than they do for substance and versatility. You might reference my 2009 internal frame pack review. I think I was talking about that. Here's your, back, your sleeping bag compartment. If you're carrying a winter bag, you may have some issues of making it fit into this. I was really working putting a North Face synthetic, I think it was a zero or maybe even minus 10 bag and I really had to work at it. Uh, it's not overly huge. You may have to go external with carrying your sleeping bag if you are carrying a sleeping bag. I just have one that's representative in here. This is like last suspect's bag. It's nothing special, but it shows you how to go in there. No big deal. Now, you may note on this side, I'm not running a pouch. I'll tell you why here in a second, but first let's look at the pouch. And I do have a minor criticism of its attachment. It is a Molly weavable pouch. Okay, so it weaves into the Molly you see here. So there's a Molly run here on the Kelt Eagle, another one right here. But do you see a problem? And this is woven correctly, <laughs> this side pouch. Do you see a problem? Well, it's kind of wiggling around. <laughs> That's right, it is. It just doesn't really tight, tighten on there. And there's really no strap like some other pack systems I have that will come over that and cinch it. Kind of like the Tioga and Super Tioga because those packs do have it and you can really lock this pouch down so it's not flopping around. It kind of bugged me. It was not a showstopper to be honest. And like you can see, it is woven correctly. I didn't miss anything. It is what it is. Now, as a strap, I just have bubble wrap in here just for volume so you can see what it looks like. Uh, as a pouch, it's excellent because it's big. You want a big pouch. 
Um, a lot of times I was carrying uh, first aid stuff in here, lighting, and then gloves, like lightweight, cause since it was flopping around, I didn't want to weight this patch down a lot, lightweight items here, maybe a rolled up fleece. Then you have two more pouches on the back. These are integral. You cannot remove these on the Kelty Eagle. And I think also on the Kelty Falcon for that matter. Take a look in this one. I'll make sure I'm not going to miss anything. It just got bubble wrap for volume so you can see. Nice, big, roomy pouch. This is a great place to run your knives. Well, a couple. Again, I like to keep my weight close to my shoulder blades. I'm not going to weight it a lot out here. There's lots of information, good information out there of how to um, weight your internal frame pack. That will take us to this side where I'm running clean. I don't have a pouch here. Why is that? Well, if you've watched Operation Red Skies, you know exactly why. And that is another huge benefit to this size pack and specifically the Kelty Eagle. It is a weapons carrier. It will carry a rifle readily if you keep this pouch off. And it locks into this supposedly uh, water bottle pocket. These are meshed, one on each side. They are roomy, really easy to extract a water bottle. Your mittens, I don't know, an energy bar, whatever you're carrying here in a typical backpacking scenario. But if you flex into a tactical one, it works too because I put the buttstock right here in the mesh. I run the rifle underneath these straps and I lock that sucker down and it works like a champ. Hey, nothing is that more accessible than the Eberly system. I would say it's about on par, maybe a little bit faster to get the gun into action. Because we tried it. We worked with it. In Operation Red Skies, you saw there that we're, I was running the M1A Scout Squad. And you can actually see the burn marks of me shooting off the pack. Those are powder burns from Op Red Skies on the Kelty Eagle. And that's another plus of having a pack this size. You have a built-in shooting platform. Well, which way should I shoot it? Does it have a special, you know, notch for the rifle? Nah, screw that. Whatever works, man. Throw it on your terrain. What It really is terrain dependent. Whatever works. We just threw it on there. I saw that this was about the right height. I just rest the muzzle on there. Start cracking the shots off. Whatever it takes. You know? You know, I'm not an uh, a engagement expert. Do you drop the pack? Do you leave the pack on? You know, different services have different ways of teaching their troops. I just do what works. You know, with 80 pounds on my back, I ain't mobile. I'll probably get shot. So I dump the pack. If I'm in a situation that I can use it as a firing rest, I'll do it. And the Kelty Eagle did great. You can say, see it took hits, you know, powder hits, you know, with a high velocity muzzle blast. Didn't rip the fabric at all. Just makes it look cooler. <laughs> just makes it look cooler. That takes it to the top of the pack. Again, we're not running the top pouch on on this one, in this configuration. You see here I have some hollowed out 550 cord for tent attachment. That's where I was running my tent, on this Molly. When I did Operation Red Skies, I was really thinking of putting the 20 round ammo pouches here. But then I realized, well, I don't do stuff just for show for TMP. I just don't. If it's not practical, you're not going to see it. And I was like, I'm not going to go through like in one shooting when we stop. like. <laughs> 80 or 120 rounds. There's just no way. So I was like, ah, no. If I was in Afghanistan in a combat environment where I knew that a firefight, I could be going through mag after mag, you would see me running probably right here several magazine pouches externally, readily available in addition to what I'm wearing on the front of my body. See what we're saying? So we're thinking our systems through. We're doing the right thing dependent on the situation what's going on. Don't carry more weight than you have to. Don't make your system more complex than you have to. Make it as simple as you possibly can. I cannot overemphasize that. And that is a recurring theme throughout TMP. That's what you're seeing here. On Op Reds, guys, I didn't need all that crap. I didn't need the extra weight. So what do I do? I pair off what I don't need with the Kelty Eagle and it is versatile that way. Versatile that way. Here's the thing I really love about the pack. I love, love, love this. And it's hard to find in an internal frame pack. It's a panel loader, dudes. Check this out. So you've got, let's say you have your favorite freeze-dried meal. For whatever reason, it's in the middle of this pack. You don't have to go through the spin drift collar, the very top, and dig through everything trying to find it. You can actually unzip it, the Kelty Eagle, and access it right here. You're going to see Mrs. Nut Fancy's funky colored pillow <laughs> used for volume. But check that out. 
There's your internal organization system while I read it. Look at the mesh pockets. Does this add weight? Yeah, it does. Anytime you put a zipper in there, it's going to add weight. That's where some of that 11, whatever, 11 and a half pounds is. But it's a great organization system. Maybe you're putting your lighting products here. You have some first aid items here. Down here you have extra batteries for whatever. Cell phone, GPS, laser rangefinder, all organizable. And it's not getting pitched all inside your pack, nor do you have to put them in little ditty bags, also adding weight. There's a mesh divider between the main compartment and this external compartment. What I did in my outings is I'm jamming clothing in here that I knew I would be needing. Maybe it's a fleece jacket, more gloves, socks, whatever. And then if I had to dig to get that freeze dried meal, I just unzip this, you see the zipper here. In we go, it's a panel loader. This is a well thought out pack. Really well thought out pack. Features wise, I don't know how it could be improved. It's there, fellas, it really is. Yes, this has a circumfer circumference zipper on it. That's more weight. Firepower versus mobility though. You get a lot of features, it's gonna add weight. This is my zipper pull. It's just one from Camp Moore just to know what temp is out there. And then, of course, like all internal frames, it will load from the top. And so here's your very expandable waterproof, that is polyurethane coated spin drift collar on the Kelty 8 128. And this thing's seen a lot of wear and it's doing great. This is how you would load and probably access a lot of what you're, you're gonna be doing on the pack. Materials, this is pack nylon. It is probably a six out of 10 in durability in my experience for a lot of different reasons. Um, this is 500 Kodra, I kind of like, uh, it's basically Cordura nylon and they use 500 denier on that, very smart. So this is not an entirely a 1000 denier, that is the thickness of fabric backpack. That is, that is stupid to do and there's a lot of manufacturers that do that and I've given them heat for it in person and they just like, well, we want it to be durable. I'm like, well, do you want it to weigh 20 pounds empty? They use it where it's necessary, and that's on the bottom of the pack. This is 1,000 denier. It's rugged. Why? Because a lot of times it's going to be seen a lot of wear. As we take our rest brakes on rocks, it's going to get rubbed, dragging it on rocks, getting in and out of armored vehicles, all that stuff. There you go. So I think it's a smart setup. It does not have a dedicated H2O pouch in it that I found, not the one that I was using at least. And so what I was doing it, what I was doing is either running just a dedicated water bottle, which to be honest I do frequently, or run it in this. The accessory top pocket. And I'll give you a look at this real quick. You can see it's got dedicated magazine area or like I have here, water bottle in here. You could jam a, a small hydration bladder in there. I did run, I think, I don't know, like a four quart in here one year and it worked fine. You know, I think it does have some routing holes in the Kelta Eagle that you can thread the drinking tube and it'll, it'll work. This will also transform into a fanny pack. I did not test that function because I didn't need to. Mesh pocket here for more durability. It is foam on here because this is going to go on your butt section. Strap will come around, attach in the front. This is kind of a good, I don't know, day excursion pack that's part of your system. So you get up there, hey, you got something. Is it ideal? Probably not, but it's better than nothing. It has some volume to it. Molly on the top, you could attach your magazines there. And it is quick detachable, as you can see with the Fastex buckles right there. So it'll attach to the top. We'll add weight, we'll add height, all that other stuff. I need to wrap it up. How about competitive alternatives, nothing fancy? Oh, one thing right here. I wish that was a bigger section of Velcro, so you had a, you know, a righteous name tape morale patch area on the back too. I could easily sew that, just never got around to it. Maybe later on I'll do it. Well, like I said, this is not the only large volume tactical backpack option around. There's some other great ones that, that are there, although they're gonna be more expensive. For instance, the Eberly Stock Sky Crane, about, I think 12 pounds, $500. And it's smaller, from what I saw, 7,300 cubic inches. It's a great pack though and it comes in even better colors. I love this color. This is Coyote Brown of course. But that dry earth that Glenn does over there at Everly Stock is amazing. Great. Love it. They also have the Terminator XL. It's about 11 pounds, $400. About 6,100 cubic inches. It's, it's a smaller backpack. Battleship. That's an Everly Stock option. 
that's going to be a smaller pack and a lighter pack. 8 pounds, 12 ounces, about 6,100 cubes on that. I think that's a great pack. All of them are great. Mystery Ranch puts together some really nice packs, but I just think they're outrageously priced, to be dead honest with you. Um, they just are. The nice pack, I think they call it the nice 7,500 BUS, 10 pounds, $700 for that one, 7,500 cubes, so it still doesn't have enough as much volume as you're going to get with a Celtic Eagle. just isn't. I say durability and reliability for what you're getting and value on the Celtic Eagle is superb. That's why I'm doing this video. That's why I did the testing. I suspected it would be, and I should have done this video like two years ago, but now I totally know. It's awesome. It accommodates a, a long rifle on the side. And by the way, it is stable when you carry that. If you're wondering, hey man, I'm carrying a rifle on the side, doesn't that throw you off? Nope. You can compensate for it. Just load this side pocket up or load heavier stuff here and just equal load, right? It's a fabulous pack. Now, if you have watched this video to this point, you're getting ready to save some money because I've worked a very special limited time only deal for you. Look in the upper portion of the screen right there. That's where you need to go to get this Kelty Eagle. And it will be for a limited time. We did a special with Amron International on the Kelty Map 3500 in all types of different colors to include multicam. Man, we, we saved you some huge bucks on that. I'm gonna do the best I can getting you this for the least amount of money I can. I think the going rate on the Kelty Eagle after this deal is done, still cheaper than some other alternatives, about $450. But on this video, look again, look in the sidebar description, order it if you need this system right now. <laughs> Don't delay it because that's, that deal will not last very long. Once they sell them, they're gone. It's going to go up to the normal price. We saw that with the Kelty Map 3500 deal. Guys were crying. They're like, oh man, I missed that deal. I'm like, well, you got to watch videos, dude. I don't know what else to do. Hook you up. Great pack. It is a large volume pack. Do you need such a large volume pack? I would say if you've been out in the woods a lot, you've been in tactical environments a lot, you would probably say yes. Not on every expedition, but on some expeditions. You go, yeah, I kind of need that volume. There's a lot that, that you need to carry. If you want to be truly prepared, truly ready, um, there's really no shortcuts, dude. If you don't have a vehicle support system, you know, you're on your own, you're on foot, well, it's eye-opening. It's eye-opening that how much stuff you need to be comfortable to just keep your life going. And if you're fighting a war off your back, it gets even more complicated. It's a lot of crap. And I wish you the best in all your efforts. I wish you the best in your preparedness systems. That's one of the huge reasons I do the Nut and Fancy Project, helping good, responsible civilians and military and LE personnel all over the world. Thanks. See ya.